Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the remove if method in the ArrayList class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the array list remove if method. Um, basically, here's the method signature here, remove if, and then you've got predicate, right? And then inside of the chevrons here, you got uh, basically wildcard super e. Don't worry about wildcard super e. I'll be going into the uh, generic wildcards with both the super and extends here in, in just some tutorials in the near future here, right? Now the predicate is a functional interface, right? And then filter, of course, is just basically our uh, reference variable there, a local copy of that. And it returns back a primitive Boolean result. So the remove if method removes all matching elements in the current ArrayList instance that evaluate to true for the predicate expression filter. You might be going to say what? Now I'll explain this in great detail here now. In order to use this method, you will need to have a basic understanding of Lambda expressions. If you're not familiar with Lambda expressions, the following tutorials will teach you what you need to know in order to use this method, right? So basically these three will get you where you need to go, if you're unfamiliar with that. Now the predicate interface is a functional interface that has a single abstract method. It has other methods in there, some default methods, and I think maybe a static, I don't remember off the top of my head, but just a single abstract method. That's the definition of a functional interface, by the way. One and only one abstract method, named test, that returns a primitive Boolean result. And basically here's what, what that looks like, right? Um, the, font, the abstract method there, of course, inside an interface, if it doesn't have the modifier, or not the modifier, but uh, abstract listed there, it's implicitly abstract, okay? So basically we can add, pass a predicate-based lambda expression as the argument for this method to do its thing. I'll demonstrate exactly how the predicate interface works in the source code. I'm gonna actually go through that pretty extensively here. So let's come down here and dive right in. Let's come highlight all this source code here. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop but if you don't you can create one really fast by right clicking new shortcut CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. All right, let's pop that open, type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command, press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory backslash, tells it to go to the root. I'm gonna make a directory here called Java using the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'll change directories to the Java folder. I'm gonna make a directory here called uh, array list remove if. I'm gonna change directories to the array list remove if folder. I'm gonna notepad array list remove if dot Java. That'll be the name of my source code file there, also known as a compilation unit. Go ahead and hit Control V to paste that in, or right click and select paste. Okay, so inside of the source code here, basically I'm importing the java.util uh, package with everything and basically just that particular one there, and then I'm importing Java util function and predicate, right? And that, that particular interface is located in the Java util function package. A single class and a single interface here, okay? So in Single class is just a array list remove if, and basically here's my main method entry point. And I'm creating a functional interface. I'm actually calling it functional interface here too as well. So interface, functional interface, and inside of the diamond syntax there, basically I'm just using T for my type variable, right? Call these chevrons if you want to, or pointy angle brackets, whatever, whatever you want there. Um, and then here's my single abstract method, right? Boolean return type, its name is test, and then of course my type variable there, right? Of type, whatever that's going to be, and then T, right? And you can see there's no method body right here, so this, this is an abstract method. It's implicitly abstract. I could put the 
I could put abstract here if, if we if we wanted to, but you just gotta know that it's uh, you know implicitly there rather than explicitly stating that. Okay, so in the functional interface here, um, I'm just gonna make a functional interface that does a few things here before I go into the remove if method here. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is declaring a reference variable fi, right? Um, a functional interface type, and then I'm gonna assign that to a lambda expression, simple one. X is less than five, all right? Um, so we'll be passing in a, um, a basically a variable, right? And I'm specifying an integer type here on this one here. So when, we, when this comes in, we're gonna get an integer and it's gonna auto box it from a primitive int type into an actual integer type there, right? And as long as it's um, as long as it's less than five, this is going to return back true, right? Because this is basically our evaluation portion of the lambda expression here, right? So as long as whatever number we're throwing in, as long as it's less than five, it's going to return back true, right? Okay. So and then I'm setting up this little temporary variable called counter, and that's just going to count some stuff there, setting that equal to zero. And then I'm doing a while statement, a very simple while statement, and then fi, and then I'm invoking the test method down here, right? And I'm passing it counter. So the first time it's gonna come in and, and the functional interface in the lambda expression, it'll evaluate, you know, for example, zero. Zero is less than five, this will return back true, okay, based on that. And so we'll display counter plus the value of counter. So this is almost like I'm using this functional interface to do like a, for example, like a little simple for statement loop, you know, displaying that. But um, so using this as a very simple example, you get the idea of how to, you know, implement a functional interface because um, this functional interface is, well, let's go ahead and run this here and I'll, then I'll get ahead of myself there. Let's clear our screen. Java C to compile this, Java to run it, to in run the Java virtual machine, and then we'll go ahead and invoke the array list remove if class. Okay, so on the first portion of it, right up here, right? Um, zero, one, two, three, and four. Once counter became five, right? Passing that into the um, counter into the test there, right? This is essentially this lambda expression evaluated that. Once it's equal to five, it returned false, right? And that kicked us out of the while statement. So that's pretty simple there. All right, so um, after the after I do a, uh, a print line, simple print line here, I'm doing a predicate integer, right? Pi equals, and then this exact same lambda expression up here. Okay. So basically, I'm just showing you exactly how we could, you know, the way the predicate um, functional interface works is exactly how this works right here. Okay. So basically while pi.test, right, has the same exact method name, test, and then passing in counter, you could see we do the exact same thing right there. Let's move this up just a little bit here. Okay, display counter, add one to it. Once the pi.test returns back false, right, which is this lambda expression here, which X hits uh, basically counter is equal to five, right? Then it just breaks out of it and we're, we're good to go. All right, now let's go down here and talk about the remove if thing here. So the first thing I'm doing is creating a new array list, uh, reference variable states, and then I'm just populating it, you know, with Alaska, Alabama, California, Colorado, Hawaii, New York. Now you'll notice these first two states begin with the letter A, these next two states begin with the letter C, okay? So we'll display it to the console there. Let's go ahead and just scroll up on this here. Let's scroll up a little bit more on that, there we go. All right, so we'll display this to the console and that's what we have right up here, states. There's our, what's in the array list for that. And now I'm going to do predicate and string, right? Um, you may be somewhat confused as to why I'm doing that there. Uh, you know, in the documentation up here, it had uh, basically, you know, question mark super e. So we can pass in really, really almost any class there. Um, just, you wanna make sure that if we put, for example, string like what I'm doing over here, that will make sure that whatever we pass in as the argument to the test method, right, must be 
string type. You know, it's a little bit more complicated with that with the super E, but just for now, just match the, the types. Like don't throw in a substring, for example, or not a sub string, um, a, a string builder, right? Substring's not a class, but a string builder, for example, if you threw a string builder object where it's expecting a string object, you're, it's not going to compile, so. Predicate, string type, so be, means this, right? And then P is just or merely a reference variable there. And then here is our um, expression that will evaluate to either true or false, right? And basically, I'm invoking the substring method starting at the uh, character that's at index zero, which is the first character, right? And then pulling basically one character. If it equals A, right, this will return back true. Now up here, you know, basically, because I'm doing a while statement, I wanted stuff to return back true. Once it returned false, it would break out of the while statement. Now the remove if will remove them if they, this expression evaluates to true, okay? So in this particular case, the first thing I'm going to, uh, in this first lambda expression here, we want to remove everything that begins with the letter A, which is Alaska and Alabama, okay? So when we pat when we invoke the remove if method here right on our states array list right pass it the predicate p here which is basically this lambda expression there it's going to remove anything that this particular method returns back true on okay so we should end up with basically california colorado hawaii new york after it removes alaska and alabama okay so Right here on this particular statement, I'm just displaying states after I've invoked the remove if. So you can see states remove if, P, California, Colorado, Hawaii, New York. So see, that's how that works there. All right, and then we'll just display a simple print line. And now what I'm gonna do is instead of, you know, um, initializing a uh, this variable P here, now that you know how this works here, I'm going to just pass in a lambda expression here. Now, one of the things um, with the Lambda expression here is to the left of the Lambda operator, right? This is the Lambda operator here. To the left of this, because up here, right, for the predicate, I specified string in there, it knows that X must be a string, right? Now, down here in this particular Lambda expression, I'm specifying string X, right? Because it's going to need to know that if we don't tell it. And then now it knows that it can invoke the substring method because the substring method is part of the string class, okay? And so we are just checking basically if the first character is equal to C, if that returns back true, it will just go ahead and remove all of those, okay? So now states equals simply Hawaii and New York, so it took out California and Colorado. Okay. That pretty much covers that. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this and get rid of that. I don't really have any final thoughts on this particular one there. Uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.